We tend to talk about successful NFL players here on JD Productions, but today we're switching things up a little bit. Not everybody can make it as a professional football player, and sometimes that can be a good thing, like in the case of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Johnson was nearly one of the best college football players in the nation at one point, helping Miami win a national championship, but it all went wrong, luckily in the end for Johnson. Dwayne Johnson recently bought the XFL and is one of the most famous actors in the United States, but this isn't about that. This is the story of his almost... NFL career. Before we jump into Dwayne Johnson, I'd like to take a second to acknowledge that the majority of our viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. Jackson and I are both college students and hope to one day make this our full-time job. So please, if you do enjoy, consider subscribing and helping us on our journey here on YouTube. Thank you and enjoy the video. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is one of the most successful actors in Hollywood, but if it wasn't for a string of injuries and a future Hall of Famer stealing his job at Miami, he would have likely made a living in the NFL. Smoldering intensity. the hell are you doing? What just happened? Dwayne Douglas Johnson had quite the upbringing. Johnson and his family lived in seven different places, including New Zealand. He and his family had been evicted and forced to leave Hawaii when he was 14 years old. By 16, Johnson had already been arrested for everything from fighting and stealing to forging checks. He and his family later moved to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where he attended Freedom High School, his third high school. After moving to Bethlehem at six foot four, 200 pounds, Johnson was in a bad place in his life. One day at Freedom, Johnson decided to use the teacher's bathroom bathroom and was caught by a teacher named Jody Swick. Johnson was disrespectful and went to apologize to Swick the next day, prompting Swick to tell Johnson, I want you to do something for me. I want you to come out and play football for me. Swick was the team's head coach and became a mentor for Johnson. Johnson fell in love with football that season and ended up changing his life around, centering his focus on football instead of getting in trouble. Johnson started to get recruited due to his stellar play and had many Division I schools after him. Johnson accepted a full scholarship from the University of Miami to play college football. He was recruited by Miami's defensive line coach. You may have heard of him, Ed Orgeron. Yeah, that Ed Orgeron. Go Tigers. Orgeron has come a long way since his days at Miami, of course winning the national championship this past season at LSU. Orgeron looked back on Johnson's original recruitment, saying, He was a highly recruited kid. We were excited to have him. He came to us ahead of his time. He was developed and was extremely quick. He was a hard worker and a humble young man. According to Johnson, one time he complained to Orgeron and Orgeron told him, They can hold you. They can kick you in the balls. They can f***ing spit in your face. F*** you going to cry about it or are you going to overcome that and make the play? That's bigger than football, man. That's a whole world view. Johnson played majorly defensive tackle for the Hurricanes and was a member of their 1991 national championship team, playing a role on the team and nearly starting as a freshman. Things looked up for Johnson, going into year two at Miami, but injuries led him to being replaced as a starter permanently. A tough outcome for Johnson, but he was replaced by a future Hall of Famer and Warren Sapp. According to Sapp, at Miami, he told Johnson, I'm here for your job, bitch. Sapp sure did steal his job and went on to win NFL Defensive Player of the Year, be named an All-Pro six times, and have his number 99 retired by the Buccaneers. So yeah, not too much Johnson could have done there. Known as The Rock, Johnson had a different name in Miami, Dewey. Everyone from coaches to his fellow teammates called him by that nickname. Johnson was listed at 6'5", 274 pounds during his time at Miami. He played in 39 games, but only started once. He recorded a total of 77 tackles and 4.25 sacks over four years. For Johnson, the dream always was the NFL. He once said, My number one goal was to make it to the NFL just so I can buy my parents their first house that they lived in. Things did look to be heading that way early during his time in Miami, but injuries piled up and never stopped. He suffered a handful of serious injuries, resulting in him having to undergo five different knee surgeries. On top of that, he had debilitating back trauma and had to undergo medical reconstruction of his shoulder. He entered the 1985 NFL draft but wasn't selected. He opted to signed with the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League to play linebacker. Things just didn't work out though. Calgary assigned him to the practice squad before cutting him two months into the season. Johnson has talked about being at rock bottom after being cut by Calgary. He even had to move back in with his parents in their small apartment because he couldn't even afford to live in Miami with his girlfriend. He found himself out of football without a job, prompting Johnson to train to enter the family business, professional wrestling. The Rock's adoptive grandfather, Peter Maivia, was once one of the biggest 
biggest stars in the Worldwide Wrestling Foundation, known as the Flying Hawaiian. His adoptive daughter, Ada, later married and had a child with Rocky Johnson, the father of Dwayne Johnson. Rocky was a longtime pro wrestler, wrestling from 1964 to 1985 and spending his final time in the World Wrestling Federation. He and Tony Atlas won the World Tag Team Championship in 1983 to become the first African-American WWE. He went to UF and eventually got his big break in The Scorpion King in 2002. Johnson went on to leave wrestling for his theatrical career and since has been in, well, everything. I mean, it feels like this dude is in everything. He has been in a ton of successful movies such as Jumanji, Moana, and the Fast and Furious franchise. During his time in Hollywood, Johnson has become one of the most popular and richest actors. His net worth currently is estimated at around $320 million. He has donated to all kinds of different causes such as Hurricane Harvey relief efforts in 2017. But most recently, Johnson recently found his name relevant again in professional football after he was a part of a group that purchased the XFL. The XFL filed for bankruptcy in April and was soon going to have a bankruptcy action before it was purchased for $15 million. Johnson said that his investment in the XFL was rooted deeply in many things, my passion for the game and my desire to always take care of the fans. He added that he looks forward to creating something special for the players, fans, and everyone involved for the love of football. Johnson is constantly in the news for whatever reason. After all, he is one of the most influential people in the United States. Most recently, Johnson made headlines after he announced that he, his wife, and his two youngest daughters all tested positive for COVID-19 but had recovered. Dwayne The Rock Johnson once aspired to be a professional football player and he was nearly there. If it wasn't for unfortunate injuries and future Hall of Famer Warren Sapp coming in and taking his starting job, everything would be different for Johnson. He progressed his career quickly after football into professional wrestling and then into acting, where he has excelled for years. It's safe to say that professional football didn't work out for Johnson, but he did have one hell of a fallback plan. The Rock has such an inspiring and wild story. Sometimes what you want doesn't happen, and sometimes that's how it's supposed to be. That was the case for Dwayne Johnson, and it's a life lesson we should all hold on to.